Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is my fourth video, which means I've been doing YouTube for a month now. I'm very excited. September is about to be over. And we are going into almost every drag queen's favorite month, October. It's actually not my favorite month. I hate fall. I mean, Halloween is cute and everything, but I don't like the cold. My skin can't handle it. So today we're gonna talk about finding your own drag style. If you're a newer entertainer or an older entertainer, you can kind of follow through this and let us know how you found yours. And we're gonna get painted together. I thought this would be a fun look today. It's kind of Mad Hatter. All eyes on me in the center of the ring just like a circus. I call this Get Painted With Me, GPWM. It's just like Get Ready With Me except for drag. So let's get started. And we are back. I started off by putting in these pink contacts here. If you like them, I got them on honeycolor.com. They're really cute. They're really vibrant, if you like that kind of thing. And they're prescription too, because I'm blind and I can't see shit. So let's just begin. I'm gonna prime my face with that NYX Hydra Touch. It smells very cooling and minty. Which is nice, cause I didn't brush my teeth yet. I'm finally getting my hair cut today. See all this going on here? That will be gone. I know you're very happy for me. Then alcohol down those brows. Then we can go in with our foundation. Now one of the important things to do when starting drag, I think, is finding out and discovering what your personal drag style is gonna be. It's important because it's something that's gonna help you stand out among other people. And once you become a little bit more well-known, when people are putting a show together, they're gonna be like, oh, I'd like to throw in a girl that does this, or that looks like that. And if you have a distinct drag style already, that'll make it easy for them to think of you when they're booking a show and they need something specific. This foundation really does not match my skin right now at all. I still have summer skin, sun-kissed, and this is my winter shade because I ran out of my summer shade. Okay, now it's eyebrow time. We're going into that prosaid. Now the first thing to do is to find yourself some inspirations. Look around in your community, look around on Facebook and social media, wherever. Find inspirations, find the queens that you look at and you think, you're kind of what I aspire to be. You're kind of the aesthetic that I'm going for. Just to kind of get yourself an idea of what direction you want to go in. Consider things like, when you perform, what kind of music do you like? What do you want to be known for? Are you more comedy? Maybe you're not like a dancing queen or a ballad girl. Maybe you're someone who's like shticky and likes to do quirky, funny stuff. And that'll make it easier for you to figure out a look that kind of goes with your performing abilities. Set the brows with a little bit of face powder. After I set my brows, I take more of my foundation and then I do the upper part of my head. And like the primitive beings we are, take our finger and blend through it. You already know what excites me the most. Dust off the excess. And now we're gonna contour with our Ben Nye Plains Dust. And speaking of contour, the very first drag inspiration I had was India Farah. My best friend and I would go on MySpace and we would look at all the drag queens. I think it mostly just showed us girls in the Ohio area. We started adding some on MySpace and then there was like, you should know this person and that person, however it worked back then, I don't remember. And India Farah was the first queen that I saw that I was like really struck by like instantly with her looks. And again, this was like 2007, 2008. So she hadn't been on Drag Race yet. The first season of Drag Race hadn't even been a thing yet. And at the time, I think she was living in Dayton, Ohio, or somewhere. She was living in Ohio at the time. Where she performed was several hours from where I lived, so I never got to see her. But I would just look at her pictures and be like, she's the one that I want to look like. If I had to pick someone, it was definitely her. And one of the things I loved about her was her contour was just so... And as I got to working and meeting all other kinds of queens in person, I got inspired by different things. There were definitely pieces and parts of several different entertainers that I'm like, ooh, I love this, I love that. And so I started taking bits and pieces of each entertainer that had something I liked and tried to learn 
how to do that. Now, if you're a young entertainer out there looking for a drag mother, I wouldn't suggest finding someone who you want to entirely emulate, because then what happens is you just kind of look like a knockoff version of your drag mother. And whenever I see that, I just think of the movie Single White Female. If you've never seen it, it's a good movie. You should watch. You don't want to be a carbon copy, so find out ways to kind of make that look your own. Ways to put your own twist on something that you like, to make them not just see the person that you're trying to emulate, to make them see you. And this isn't just when it comes to your look. This kind of comes to your personality. If you're someone who's going to speak on the microphone, do you say all the same jokes that every other queen has said? I do that sometimes. Sometimes when I'm on the microphone, I turn into my drag mother, which isn't a bad thing. You're just taking certain jokes that have stuck with you, certain things to say to the audience that you see has worked over time, but you also want them to see who you are too. If you're just gonna copy someone, why would they wanna hire the copy to do a show when they can get the original? But also everything's been done before. There's really nothing that you can do after drag being around for so many decades that's gonna be 100% unique but you do want to stand out from your peers in any way that you can. Okay, that's way thicker than I wanted this eyebrow. I guess that's what we're doing. Again, keep in mind what your style is going to be. Are you going to be a glam girl? Are you going to be a dancing diva? Are you more old school? Are you more new school? Are you an androgynous entertainer? Are you more of a fishy, sexy queen? Are you going to be shticky in comedy? Are you going to be niche? Um, there's girls that I've seen that kind of have just a very specific set style. And, they're, and it's always that style, whether you know you want to look like a living baby doll, or you want to look like a clown, or your style is always goth. These girls have really branded themselves in these styles, and you know if you're looking for that kind of a look for a show, those are the girls that you're going to go to. Okay, I'm going to put this P. Louise base on my eyes. It's that white gunk y'all are always asking me about. I put a little on my hand, and I do like this, and then I do like this. Now I'm doing a really colorful look today, and this stuff really helps grip color and make it stick to your eye. Now don't feel bad if people don't understand what your aesthetic is, like if you're a newer entertainer and you're just playing around with makeup. There were many times where people talked behind my back or even pulled me aside to my face and said they didn't like the way I did my makeup, they didn't like the colors I used. Because I've always been someone who's very colorful. At some point I'm going to use every color in every palette that I own. I don't always like to play it safe. And what I do is not groundbreaking by any means whatsoever. It's just that when I started and where I started, there weren't a lot of girls that were using all kinds of crazy colors. Also, I was new, so even though I knew what I was going for and I wanted to put this here and that there and this here and do all this crazy stuff, it wasn't done well because I was learning. I didn't know. But I did know what I was going for and I knew what it was that I wanted to eventually achieve. So when people try to dissuade you away from doing something, don't let them. Maybe just ask them how you can do what you do better. Okay, so let's get into some color. I think I'm gonna start off with like a violet color from, again, Juvia's Place. I'm gonna take this violet and put it right here. Now my typical drag style myself is a little bit of old school. I like big costumes and big hair. I like really dramatic makeup. I want to look like a macaw, goddammit. But I'm also someone that gets really bored, so I like to change it up a lot. It's good to set whatever your base style is and get that all together. Have a look in a style that if you have a show like real quickly after work or something, you can get yourself together, put your style together, and just give them that. But it's also good to be versatile. But every now and then, just switch it up a little bit. So they're just like, whoa, like, I didn't know you could do that. I think I do a decent job of doing that. I do get booked to do a lot of shows that have different themes, and I love themes. Any theme you give me, I'm going to 110% commit to, and it helps you do looks and create styles and performances that maybe you wouldn't ordinarily do. Side note, I'm thinking about that single white female thing again, and I think they should do a drag movie version of that. It could be about like this lonely drag queen that's just starting off and no one wants to take her under their wing. They just look at her and see a hot shitty mess. Well finally this one queen that, that she really admires like takes her under her wing and starts teaching her her ways, how she paints, how she does her wigs, how she styles herself. And the young girl gets obsessed. 
and starts going to all her costume makers and her wig designers, starts coming out to shows looking exactly like her, and then things get crazy. She starts pretending to be her, going to gigs as her, sending fake emails to all her friends, sleeping with her husband. Finally, the old queen tries to get rid of her, but it doesn't work. She gets knocked in the head and gets tied up and put in her basement. And so finally she goes out of town to one of her gigs, pretending to be her. And as she walks in the club, everyone's looking at her like, something is off, something is wrong, something doesn't look right with her today. And as they get closer, they realize she's shaved off her face and is wearing it as a mask, just smiling with a crown, just, uh, uh, rated PG. So I'm gonna take some sugar pill green, kind of like the green of my shirt, and that's gonna be my crease color today. And now we're gonna put our black eyeliner in, and I like to go really severe with the black. See, it's all coming together now. Also, I would say try to be respectful of everyone's drag style. And even if you think it's ugly, or you don't think it's what a drag queen or entertainer should be, there's gonna be people out there in the audience that really gravitate towards it and connect with it in some way. And for the girls starting out, don't be afraid to be ugly at first. It's not a big deal. You're gonna be ugly at first. I like to think that I learn and grow every day. Like, I look at, every year I look at pictures from the year before and I'm like, ooh, why did I do that? We are an ever-evolving creature. I just love a lot of black. I need more. I'm gonna throw on a lip. And I want this to be really vibrant too. I'm using MAC Night Moth Pencil. They are my favorite lip pencils. And I'm going to line my lips a la chola. Ooh, I look creepy. And sticking with MAC, see I'm bougie today. I'm taking Show Orchid, this really pretty pink color. Remember to poke out your lips like a blow-up doll. And just like the last video, I'm gonna take this. I have a bird. He's over 20 years old. He can sing, he can squawk, he can say a few words. The only thing he hasn't learned how to do yet is die. Is it that time, BB? Is it blush and bashful time, BB? I wanna go really colorful today. I wanna look bruised and battered. Really uncomfortable today. I have an ingrown hair on my ass. Ooh, thought my nose looked big today. I forgot to contour. I like a dark nose contour. Mama. Okay, let's brush off some of this excess. Okay, I'm basically done. I'm gonna do one last little step with these eyebrows is I'm going to put some orange powder over them because I used a brown eyebrow pencil. I really only have brown and black and red. And if you're doing a wig that's a different color, you can always take eyeshadow and put it over. Do you like the feathers? Do you like the little hat? You can't see everything in here, but that's okay. I'm too big for your TV screen. So this is what I would call my Natasha quintessential style. Big costume, dramatic face. Very colorful, very bright, very fun. I think it counterbalances my droll personality quite nicely. Don't you? So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video where we talked a little bit about finding your style in drag. Please let me know in the comments below, what is your style of drag? How do you brand yourself? Is it your personality? Are you campy, quirky? What's your deal? And who were your inspirations when you first started doing drag? Was it someone from the 90s, the 80s, someone who's currently working now? Let me know down below because I'd really like to know. Anyways, this is a quick, fun little video, so I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, Night-night.